Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to another episode of Feed the Beast Revelation. And today is going to be kind of a chatty one, as they normally are when we look into a new mod for the first time. And today's mod is going to be Thomcraft. Oh yes, uh, one of the most beloved mods of all time, based on the community feedback I've seen. So that's going to be kind of exciting. More specifically, we're actually going to be trying to get to the golems of Thomcraft. Because, as I said last episode, when we started on our immersive engineering, like, kind of base material factory thing here, I brought up the Thomcraft golems quite a lot. And that's because they sound like a really cool way of handling automation. And it sounds like, you know, something a little cooler than just moving items through a pipe. So, I want to try them out for that purpose, but... I don't really know what their limitations are, and I don't know how practical they would be in an environment like this one. So, I think the best way to solve that is to actually craft some ourselves and try them out. Now, in order to do that, there's quite a lot of stuff we need to do. They aren't the most basic aspect from Thomcraft, so... We're actually going to have a pretty good look at Thomcraft as a mod in general along the way. Before we do that, though, there is one other thing I want to take care of, and that is to fix our power generation. This should only take a minute, I'm only going to do kind of a bare minimum fix, but for those of you who are unaware, our main source of power gen across our entire world is this tree. This very derpy looking tree. I cannot believe you guys didn't yell at me more for making this thing so ugly. <laughs> I'm going to have to fix that at some point. In fact, I'm probably going to renovate this entire area at some point with a better tree and better power gen from it. I'm kind of waiting until I decide what buildings are going to go over here. Like, my original plan was to make a lumber mill of some sort and then build a bunch of custom trees and do stuff like that. But, I don't know. Uh, I'll figure that out eventually. But for right now, we're just going to kind of go through the bare minimum to get our power gen working again. So, the big issue that we currently have is that the Arboreal Extractors down here have been nerfed. Uh, they've been nerfed for the, like, 50th time, <laughs> basically. The developers of Thermal can't seem to find a good way to make these blocks work well without being too powerful, and they keep trying to figure it out. But the issue right now is that they changed them so if two Arboreal Extractors are right next to each other, or if two of them are poking into the same block, like these two are, there's a block on the inside, they run at half efficiency. So we are at best running at 50%, or maybe even only 25%, because all of these are technically next to an arboreal extractor and like going into the same block as one. So, yeah, our power gen is pretty lacking. In fact, we completely ran out of power the other day. The uh, environmental tech miner that I have set up drained it completely. So, we need to get this resolved. Now, all that really means is that I have to take each, like, one of each of the arboreal extractors from each side and pull them out one block. Now, I do have to keep in mind the other restrictions, so the tree is probably going to get a little bit bulkier. For example, these pillars on the side will need to be four blocks tall in total in order for the arboreal extractor to work, and I probably need to add a few more natural leaves using a moving wand. So... Uh, that should be pretty straightforward. I think that'll only take a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that really fast, get our power gen up and running again, and then we can move on to some Thomcraft. So apparently there is one change I either missed, or maybe the Arboreal Extractors in general are just a lot slower now, but our power generation is still draining pretty badly. <laughs> It drains slower depending on what cycle our power gen is in. In fact, sometimes we actually start gaining power, but it's definitely going down pretty quick. So this is still something I'm going to need to fix up at some point. I can make this a lot faster than it currently is, but maybe we'll just add another power generation source at some point in the near future. That is something I want to do quite a lot of anyway, is experimenting with other power sources. For the time being, though, I'm just going to go ahead and let that drain away, because I really want to get to this Thomcraft stuff. So, Thomcraft itself is pretty easy to get into. The first step of the process is to venture out into the world and find ourselves some V-Crystals. There are six of them in all, at least of the naturally spawning varieties, and ideally we want at least a few of each one. 
Thankfully, they do seem to be pretty common. Um, even finding them above ground isn't all that rare, but once you go below ground, they're pretty much everywhere. In fact, when you stumble into a ravine, the crystals are just all over the place. So, thankfully, it was relatively easy to find all I needed. Now, after you pick up your first few crystals, the game will actually tell you to go to sleep. It essentially says that you're feeling kind of inspired, and maybe if you sleep on it, you'll learn something new. Well, lo and behold, next time you go to sleep and wake up, your character will reach for a conveniently located blank book and take down some notes. Those notes describe the process of crafting something called Salus Mundus. I probably am butchering that pronunciation, it looks kind of Latin-y, but thankfully the crafting recipe itself is pretty straightforward. Now, you can do this with any three V crystals that were found earlier on, though they do need to be three different types. And I'm actually going to go ahead and craft a few of these at once because, well, I know I'll be needing them. So that's that, and now that we have our magical fairy dust, the book also describes trying to sprinkle some of it onto a bookshelf. So let's go ahead and do that, and we're going to get some pretty particles, and poof, a Thaumonomicon. So, the Thaumonomicon is essentially the mod manual for Thaumcraft, and it's kind of what you need to get started in the mod properly. Now, it is a little bit different from most mod manuals, in that, instead of just showing you everything that the mod can do, and giving you a big old list, it's actually a little bit closer to a quest book, and it helps you kind of, piece by piece, go through all of the different parts of Thaumcraft. So, for example, right now we only have one chapter open, Fundamentals, and inside of that, we can only click on this bubble right here, our first steps. So we do that, and we get this little bit of thematic text basically telling us how to craft an arcane workbench. So this is essentially our first quest, or our first task in the mod. So let's go ahead and do that. All we need to do is right-click a crafting table with some Celis Mundus. There we go. And now if we go back into our book, that first steps thing is complete. We get a little button, we can click that, and that basically takes us to the next page or the next quest, however you want to look at it. And this one is to create a thaumometer and get a point of observation fundamentals. Now, if I were to complete this quest, that would open up this tab here and let us go down to discovering alchemy. So... This is where the mod kind of starts, and this is just to get us an introduction to what each of these different facets of Thaumcraft are. So alchemy, for example, is transforming one material or one set of materials into another. For example, you can create a magical light source by combining things like glowstone and redstone and one or two other things, or converting iron ingots into thaumatical bronze for use in certain machines. Then, of course, you have Oromancy, which is a little more conventional in terms of magic. Things like shooting fireballs or teleporting through walls, that kind of stuff. Then you have Infusion, which is creating magical, usually armor or types of things like that, and infusing them with magical properties. And Artifice is kind of the tech side of Thaumcraft. So there's things like an automatic mining system or a grappling hook, for example. Really cool stuff in that one. Now, here is where we reach the problem, because <laughs> down here at the very bottom is golemancy, the art of combining magic and technology to make little golem servants. And that's what we want to reach today, but obviously, I need to unlock all of this stuff just to discover golemancy. Yes, the thing that I want to step into as my first experiment with Thaumcraft is literally one of the most advanced parts of it. Brilliant. So... That's kind of a problem. Now, just unlocking Golemancy is actually the first step as well, because as we unlock all of these, we'll open up new chapters down the side, and once we unlock the Golemancy chapter, even getting to the point of creating a new golem takes more steps in addition to that. So I have quite a lot of work to do. Now, I did intend to bring you guys along for this ride and kind of showcase why Thaumcraft is so cool and why so many people love it, but it was going to take a very, very long time. And believe me, I did try. So, unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to take care of this stuff on my own and go through all of these steps just to reach the point of being able to start a golem. Because, of course, that is the main thing I want to focus on today. I want to be able to experiment with them a bit and determine whether we're going to use them in our builds going forward. So, for the sake of time, that's what I'm going to be doing. Of course, in the future, we will return to Thaumcraft. We're probably going to have a lot of structures and different things set up in order to practice all of these different kinds of Thaumcraft stuff. 
So that is very exciting. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and just crank through all of this stuff and hopefully get to the point where we can be testing out some golems today. So I'm going to go get to it and, well, I'll <laughs> be back with you guys in just a second. So here I am, several hours later, and rocking some fabulous headwear. And yes, this did actually take several hours. It turns out that skipping straight to golems, at least when you don't really know much about Thumbcraft in the first place, is kind of a time-consuming process. Did eventually get there, though. Obviously, I had to do quite a lot of other stuff in order to do that. And at some point, we will definitely be returning to Thumbcraft, and I'll try and explain alchemy and what all of these fancy jars are, and... Things like Flux, which <laughs> I did generate quite a lot of. Uh, if you're familiar with Thomcraft, you know that that chunk of dark purple on that bar in the top left is kind of bad news. That is basically magical pollution, which can do really bad things to our world. So we're going to have to deal with that at some point, the uh, byproduct of my rushing. For the time being, though, we're just going to move straight on to Golems. Now, in order to actually create Golems, we need this arrangement of blocks right here. And it looks like kind of a weird assortment of nothing, but if we sprinkle some of our magical pixie dust onto it, that is going to poof, and it's going to turn into a golem press. And man, does this thing look cool. <laughs> I really love the, uh, the visual aspects of Thomcraft. It does a really amazing job with it. So the golem press is a pretty straightforward machine, though it can be a little overwhelming when you first look at it. It's pretty simple, though. So up here in the top left, we choose the type of golem that we want, or like the base frame for it. So there are five different types, at least as far as I'm aware. There's great wood, iron, clay, brass, and there's also a thaumium one that I haven't unlocked yet. But each one of those has slightly different properties. For example, the iron one is really sturdy and fireproof and is generally good if you want to make a golem that like fights mobs, for example. And the clay one is fireproof, and the brass one is, like, lightweight and good if you're just moving things around. So there are different reasons to use different ones. Then down here in the bottom left, you can choose a, kind of like an augment for the golem, I guess you could say. So you can put an aggression module in. That'll make it so they actually attack mobs actively. You can make it so they can carry extra stuff. Uh, there's also one that makes them a little bit more defensive. So you can do things like that to kind of beef up the golems in a specific way. And then you can swap out their individual parts. So their head, for example, they have the normal head that's just kind of there and does its thing. There's one where you basically give them a brain. And that's actually really cool, as scary as it sounds, giving machines brains. But uh, it basically makes it so they can learn what they're doing. And they actually get more efficient at the tasks you give them, which is very, very cool. And then there's a few more of those as well. I think you can give them like special eyes and stuff so they have longer ranges. Then you can swap out their arms. So like their basic arms work fine for, you know, picking up or dropping blocks, for example. But then there's ones like the fine manipulators that I believe is so that they can interact with blocks, like flipping levers and stuff for you, which is really cool. Uh, there's also ones that allow them to attack. There's like a melee attack one. There's a ranged attack one. There's one for breaking blocks if you want them to do that. So you can send them like mining for you, sort of. Uh, then, of course, you have the feet. So there's the ra uh, the basic legs, as they're called, and the uniwheel, which makes them a little bit faster, but makes it so they can't really climb things very well. Uh, there's also more of those that I don't have unlocked either. Things like the ability to climb up walls or even fly. So lots of cool options. I think this setup right here should be good for what I need, though. So now that we have our golem set up, off to the right-hand side, it shows the materials that we need. Now, I have all of the actual tangible materials in my inventory, and this up here is Machina. Uh, essentially, this is 
I guess you could kind of think of it like magical machine goo. And that's what's going to kind of like form the magical aspect of our golem. Again, this is all relating to alchemy and stuff that I don't really have time to cover today. So we have everything we need for our golem. So we can come down here and click this button. And the golem press is going to go to work, which looks awesome. Cannot wait to make builds with Thomcraft stuff. It just looks so good. And that created our golem. So little golems, we can pop them down just like a so. <laughs> I've never actually seen one with a wheel before. That is amazing. Uh, so we actually have something called the Golemancer's Bell. If I right-click this guy and run away, he will follow me around. So if I gave him a command, like, you know, taught him to attack mobs, for example, and I was out in the world, he would actually fight them with me. So that's pretty cool. But that is not what we want to do with these guys. Can shift right-click to pick him up. And I want to test this guy in an actual environment. So here in our kind of factory build thing that we're doing for immersive, let's actually pop this guy down. I want to see how these guys would actually function in an environment like this one, how practically we could actually use them. So in order to use these guys, because right now, as cool as he looks and as fun as it is to have him follow me around, he's kind of useless, right? He's not actually doing anything. And that's because he needs a command. He needs something to instruct him what to do. And you do that using seals, these little things right here. So let me take these. Now, these seals, each one kind of serves a different purpose. So if we take the empty seal, for example, that seal is basically going to tell this guy to empty whatever this seal is applied to. So if we go to this wooden storage crate, for example, I just right clicked and the seal kind of disappeared. If I was holding a golem, another seal or the golem answers bell, you can actually see it. And then, of course, with the Golemancer's Bell, you can right-click it and change some settings on it. So in this case, we can change the filter, like a whitelist, blacklist situation. We can set the priority. So basically, if we put a bunch of seals in the area, the golem will go to... We'll do basically whatever the highest priority thing is. So if we crank this all the way up, taking items out of this inventory is going to be the highest priority. I assume. He may not actually recognize this storage crate, come to think of it. <laughs> we'll have to test that out in a second. So that's what we can do with that. Uh, we can also see the requirements. So if our golem was clumsy, he would not be able to do this. And we can also set whether the seal like ignores redstone or uses it. So if we applied a redstone signal to this, we could make it so it was either on or off and you know control what the golem was doing. So all of that's really cool. There are advanced versions of the seals where you can control things like NBT data and all of that. But I think for our uses in here, the basic ones would be good enough. Now, I'm not actually sure if this is going to work, though. Let's actually throw some items in here and see what this guy does. I'm pretty sure he just doesn't recognize this crate. <laughs> so maybe we have to use, like, vanilla or Thomcraft storage instead of things from other mods that aren't compatible. That's a little bit of a bummer. That's a little unfortunate. I do think I could find a few ways around that, like using chisel and bits and stuff. But that's fine. For the time being, I think we'll test it out with the chest. Let me go grab that, and I'll be right back. I have found a chest. Let's pop this down and see if he'll work with a vanilla inventory. Oops. So if you pop the seal on, throw in some cobble, theoretically... Oh, well, that was quick. <laughs> Yeah, so with vanilla inventories, they work fine. I'm guessing that it is other mods that they don't recognize as actual storage, like, blocks. So that is a little unfortunate. I'll have to experiment with other mods and see which ones work and which ones don't, if any do. Uh, worst case scenario, using chests is fine. I might be able to cover them up with, like, chisel and bits and see if he can still reach them. We'll have to see how all of that works out. But either way, let's say we have our inventory and they pick items up from it. They obviously also need a command for what to do with those items. And we can do that using the store seal. So the store seal, if we put it on another inventory, they would try and put the items in there. We can also just put it on a wall or on the floor and they should, <laughs> just like a so, go and drop the items off. Now that works out okay, but... In this particular case, there are a few problems with it. So he's generally pretty zippy about it. But sometimes I noticed when I was testing these things just a little bit, uh, they seem to linger for a little while. It takes them a minute to kind of decide what to do. And the problem in this case is that the way that I want our system to work, like you can see, is really lingering in there for a while. 
The way I want this system to work is for the coal to be dropped off in here, and then very shortly afterwards, I want the door to close. And that means that if our golems lingered for a little too long, they could get locked in. Now, obviously I could add a little more of a delay to that, but the amount of time that they spend in there is kind of random. At the same time, we want to be able to, you know, fill these furnaces relatively quickly. Now, if we have a store tag, or a store seal rather, in each one, don't know why there's dirt in there. <laughs> if we have a store seal in each one, then the golem will actually run to each one, you know, to put items in, but he's kind of disorganized about it. He doesn't necessarily go from one to the next to the next. He goes to whichever one he notices first. And that means a couple things. One, the order that these would be filled up is just random, which means we would have to close the doors based on when we got the coal, I guess, which could mean that the guy would get locked in and then he would be stuck there and we wouldn't be able to, you know, continue filling furnaces until that one finished, which would be a problem. But in order to solve that, we would have to add a delay and, you know, a delay to the door closing specifically. But if we did that, then the golem would have a chance of going really quickly and putting two sets of fuel into one furnace, which could throw everything off. So... I think that for the purposes of filling the furnaces, it's not really going to work very well. Uh, let's also try and see what happens, because this one has the door closed now. Yeah, he's just going to go to the closest point he can to try and fill it. Which is fine, I guess, because we would be controlling the flow of items really carefully. So that would technically probably never happen. He would only have enough items to fill four furnaces and get them in specific sets. But... Yeah, it is another thing we would have to <laughs> keep in mind. So if we go ahead and open this door, he should notice relatively quickly. Or just go into the other room <laughs> for no apparent reason. What are you doing, guy? There he goes. So, yeah, their AI is a little bit finicky. Uh, maybe the smart golems, because they do learn things. They do get a little more efficient at their tasks. Maybe those guys would actually learn like to avoid those pitfalls a little bit better. They'd be a little more efficient. Maybe that's something worth testing out. I'm not entirely sure, but I am a little leery of going that route with the golems for this particular project, just because of all of those random pitfalls we have. So for loading the furnaces up, I'm kind of leaning more towards the bucket route where we would send the, uh, the bucket across up above and then we would drop coal through from the top and it would kind of look like it was falling in. I think that would probably be the most, you know, well-controlled way of handling this. And then, you know, we could put the doors up, and then they would smelt away. And then once the coal coke was done, we could distribute it back up into the furnaces and maybe use these guys. So, the way we could do that, if we go ahead and pick our seals back up, what we could do is take the store seal and put that on an inventory, and then use the collect seal, oops, Pop that down in here. And essentially the collect seal is, you know, it kind of does what it says. Anything that is within this area, marked by these little boundaries, most of them are in the wall, unfortunately. But anything within that area will automatically get collected and picked up. And then, because we have a store seal on this chest, he should walk back out and put it out here. So, let's say we would, you know, dispense our cold coke out here. He should notice that. There he goes. And then run back out and put it in here. So... I think that's a little more viable because we have a bigger time window for that. And because he has a specific command to do with this stuff, I think he'll be a little quicker to get back out of the furnace. So if we dispense the coal coke up into here and then have them drop the coal coke off, maybe in an inventory or maybe we could have them drop the coal coke off next to this and make it look like there's coal coke in here. So it looks like they're unloading it into this. And then maybe send this across as like a cart of some kind to unload at the other side of the factory. Maybe that's the best way to do it. I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little unsure about all of this stuff, but I think that's probably like the most safe way to use the golems and make everything look really automatic and interesting. That's kind of what I'm leaning towards at the moment, but you guys will have to let me know. So... That's kind of what I'm leaning to. We don't necessarily need to use the golems. I just really like the idea of, you know, these little lively creatures running around our builds and doing things for us. And this is far from the limit of what they can do. So, for example, let's... Uh, do I have... Yes, I have a provide seal. 
So the provide seal, let me go ahead and pick this one up as well, just so it doesn't uh, interfere with our guy at all. The provide seal is a really interesting one. It's sort of like the empty seal where, you know, we have items in an inventory and he'll take the items out, but only if another seal somewhere requests them. So only if we, like if we have a store seal somewhere that we enabled and said that we needed cobblestone, he would take these out only when that other seal like turned on. Another thing we could do is use the Golemancer's Bell, which if we shift right click, we get an inventory of all of the nearby inventories that have provider seals on them, and we can request those items. So I can request any number of cobblestone from there, and our golem will deliver it right to me. <laughs> it throws it straight into my inventory. <laughs> I like that a lot. So obviously that's not like the most efficient way of having a storage system or anything like that. But, you know, say we have a Thawncraft building, say for alchemy, because with alchemy you need to get all kinds of different materials to throw into your crucible. So we could actually use the Golemancer's Bell as a way to request the items that we need. There we go. And I think you should still see that other request. Or not. <laughs> Maybe he only sees one request at a time. That could be a little annoying when trying to request a bunch of items. Or he doesn't know how to pick up a Thaumonomicon, which would be a little weird, actually. Oops. Why? There we go. <laughs> Maybe this isn't the most reliable way of getting items, but it is really cool. Uh, there's also a bunch of other seals. So, like, there's all of these different kinds of seals. There's ones for uh, butchering passive mobs. There's ones for guarding an area, so killing hostile mobs. Uh, blo uh, breaking blocks, l cutting down trees, harvesting crops, all kinds of things. Uh, the use one is another really interesting one, which basically allows them to do things like use buttons and levers and whatnot, uh, basically interacting with, you know, machinery. Uh, obviously not to a super intricate extent. You can't program them to utilize complex interfaces or anything, but it could be a really interesting way to automate certain things by having our golems pushing buttons and things for us. I did want to play around with that today. The issue is that in order to do all of that, we need to make a biothomic mind. And a biothomic mind requires an infusion altar, and we would have to get into this whole other setup thing. It gets a little bit out of hand. So I think for the time being, I've learned enough about golems. I definitely want to use them going forward. But I think we're going to have to call it here for today. So I do want to know your guys' opinion on how we should actually be utilizing them. Do you think we should use them in like this build, for instance, like maybe to load coal from the outside or unload our coal coke? I think that would be a really interesting option, and I love the idea of having these little guys running around. So that is a thing. That's a thought. Obviously, as we go forward and work on more builds, we can find other uses for them. Maybe we want them to just move items around. Uh, maybe even just set them up in a really silly way to have them running back and forth. Like we could have a, a build set up where we're moving items from one side to another and we're just making the golems run back and forth endlessly just to add life to a build. I think that that would actually be kind of a cool thing to do. So I don't know. You guys will have to let me know. I think they're a really cool option for getting items around, even if they are kind of inefficient, but we'll have to see how things turn out. Next episode, we will probably be working more on the actual logistics of this building, getting things up and running and hopefully automated and hopefully figuring out stuff with the exterior and the actual build style of it. You guys gave me a lot of good feedback on the tanks, by the way. We're probably going to go with styles like this one, though a little more intricate and interesting. I have some ideas for that. But, uh, well, we'll have to wait until next episode to see all of that stuff. So, for today, I think I'm going to call it here, me and my little golem buddy. And, well, <laughs> thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.